Okay, now let's state some properties of continuous function on a closed interval. And uh, then we uh, state the intermediate value theorem and uh, the applications of intermediate value theorem. Uh, first, we state the properties. of continuous function. Uh, we state it as, as a theorem. Suppose fx and uh, gx are continuous Or mm. continuous at at some point at x equals a, then the first one that is f x plus or minus g x is continuous. is continuous at x equals a. The second that is fx times gx is, uh, or we just write, then we write as one, fx plus or minus gx, uh, fx times gx, fx over gx, that is g a is non zero, are uh, also continuous at x equals a. There's one restriction for the quotient, that is for uh, addition subtraction, multipli multiplication, and division. The second theorem. Oh, uh, this theorem is easy to prove because we only need to apply the limit laws for continuous function. The second uh, property is, is related to the composition functions. Suppose fx is continuous at x equals b and uh, gx is continuous at x equals a and g a equals b then f g x is continuous at x equals a and f g a equals f b that's for, for composition functions That's the continuous at one point. And there's uh, some other properties. The third properties, that is, suppose fx is continuous. on a closed interval a b then the 
the first one fx obtains its maximum and minimum on AB. Uh, that means uh, there exists x uh, x0 x1 be, belongs to the closed in interval such that f x not equals the minimum it's minimum and uh, f x1 because it's maximum fx can obtain its minimum and maximum on this uh, on this interval mm. okay that's uh, we just use this one maybe we just use the mm, it's obtains its maximum and the minimum or, or maybe we call this theorem as maximum and minimum theorem that's the properties for uh, that's uh, properties on a closed interval and there's a important important theorem for uh, for the continuous function on a closed interval we call this intermediate value theorem The intermediate value, value uh, uh, intermediate value theorem has two forms. The first form is suppose uh, first uh, f x is continuous. The condition is uh, con continuous on a closed interval. A, B. So, so first, uh, suppose C is a number between F A and F B. Then zero exists then there exists uh, a point x not be uh, belongs to the interval a b this is an uh, open interval such that f x not equals c Uh, from the graph, if this is A, this is B. So F A is here. Here is F A. F B is here. So any any number between F A and F B, there's X naught such that F X naught equals equals k equals c or this number here uh, the x not may may not be unique there may be some uh, may, there may be several x naught 
is the x naught is not unique, maybe, uh, but for some for some cases it's unique. But there, the 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 conclusion is that there exists at at least one x naught. Uh, the the second form uh, for intermediate value theorem that is suppose c uh, suppose c uh, between c is a number between. Between uh, maybe just a suppose we just suppose C uh, C uh, greater or equal to the minimum and less or equal to the maximum. Then there exists at least one. X not belongs to A B. Uh, maybe uh, let's for close to interval. Such that f x not equals c. This inter this intermediate value theorem is for the maximum and the minimum. Max is It's the maximum here. This is minimum. So any number between maximum and minimum, there exists at least one x naught such that f x naught equals c. That's intermediate value theorem. And there's a corollary for the intermediate value theorem. We call the uh, existence of zeros. Here is the theorem. Suppose f x is continuous. It's continuous. On a closed interval, A, B, and F, A times F, B less than zero, then there exists at least one x naught be belongs to the open interval such that f x naught equals zero. This is very special. It's easier to understand or just uh, uh, proved by the uh, Prove this theorem by the intermediate value theorem. Suppose f a f a is less than the uh, f a times f b less than zero. That means at least one uh, one of the uh, value uh, one of the value at at any point is negative and uh, another one is positive. So it because it's continuous and it has no discontinuous point and it has no gap, so it must uh, cross the y equals zero. It must cr cross the x-axis because this is one is negative and another is positive, so it must cross the zero point. So we can use this uh, 
existence of C, uh, zeros to prove uh, that some equations have uh, some equations have have solutions on a given interval. Let's uh, see some examples. The first example is show that x cubed minus x minus 1 has at least 1 0 between uh, between 0 and 2 The proof that is use intermediate value theorem or existence of zeros proves that uh, first we um, say we have to uh, say that fx is continuous on uh, 0 and 2 because it's uh, fx, maybe call this fx. This is fx. Because it's a combination of uh, power functions, or it's just a, a, a polynomial. We know that polynomial is continuous on the, on, on the whole line. First, fx is continuous on 0, 2, and f0 is negative 1, and f2, that is 8 minus 2 minus 1, that is 5. So f0 times f2 is less than 0. So by intermediate value at theorem, or existence of zeros there exists at least one x not belongs to zero and two such that fx not equals zero. That's the first one. The second one is uh, proof that the equation That the equation square root 2x plus 5 equals 4 minus x square has a solution. We don't know what the interval of the, uh, what, what, what the solution located, but we need to find the interval. We, we should find the interval such that fa times fb less than 0. So the first, this is, this is a equation, not a function. So the proof that is, first we let fx should be uh, x we move the right hand side to the left. That is x x square minus four. Maybe we write uh, in the descent order minus or plus square root two x plus five minus four. Then f x is continuous. Uh, for x greater or equal to a negative one half uh, or, or negative five or two. 
five over two. But f uh, it's easier to use zero. It's easier to compute. But f zero that is square root five minus four. This is less than zero. And f another uh, we should find another point such that uh, the value of fx at that point is greater is positive or greater than zero. So we just use f two. It's uh, it's enough because uh, two uh, that's four minus four, and this part is always positive. So f two is four plus square root uh, two times two plus five minus four. That is square root line so that is three is greater than zero so by uh, intermediate value theorem zero exists x not belongs to belongs to the zero and two such that uh, f x not equal zero. Okay, that's the uh, uh, intermediate value theorem. Uh, the last one we should state uh, which functions are continuous. The continuous function. Uh, we state it as a theorem. As a theorem, uh, intermediate value theorem. Maybe we call it the theorem six. A trigonometric uh, a power function. Power functions are continuous. On R, and uh, uh, theorem six, uh, we say that uh, trigonometric function. Trigonometric functions, exponential functions, and logarithm functions are continuous. On their domain, and by the addition and addition, the multiplications and uh, uh, divisions of for continuous function, we know that uh, all elementary. Functions are continuous on their domain. On their domains. Uh, what is the elementary function? The elementary function is.
elementary functions are the power function, power functions, or maybe the that's the part the uh, and that's the functions. That are functions. Uh, functions uh, from um, functions derived uh, derived from derived from a finite additions uh, subtractions multiplications and divisions uh, multiplications divisions And a composition. The finite term addition, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, and, and compositions of uh, power functions, or power function, trigonometric function. Exponential function and uh, exponential functions and uh, log reason and uh, inverse and inverse trigonometric function. That's the elementary functions. Uh, we uh, did not study the inverse trigonometric functions, uh, and already maybe uh, we, we uh, can study this uh, type of functions later. So all so all elementary functions are continuous on their domains. So we don't don't need to worry about. If this function is continuous or not, uh, all functions we we encountered in calculus mostly are elementary functions, so we don't need to worry about the continu continuity of those functions.